Despite setbacks, ceasefire negotiations continue between Israel and Hamas, with the U.S. playing a key role in the talks. In an interview Sunday, Admiral John Kirby said the Biden administration is still pushing to secure a deal. Take a listen. It's very, very difficult. But as the president said the other day, you know, everything's unrealistic until all of a sudden it's not anymore. And we're going to keep trying at this. And this idea that we're just throwing up our hands and, well, it's not going to happen before the end of the term, I can tell you that is not where the president is, not where Jake Sullivan or Tony Blinken are. Uh, we still believe that, that there's a, a possibility of moving this forward and we're going to keep trying. Well, these attempts at reaching a ceasefire come as Israel is simultaneously fighting an escalating war with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Yesterday was the deadliest day in that conflict, with more than 500 reported deaths in Lebanon following Israeli strikes. So for more on this, I want to bring in David Dawood. He is a senior fellow for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank you so much for joining us. I think this is a particular area of the world that for many people is a little confusing. Um, but let's start here. You know, the U.S. has long been supportive of Israel as it has attempted to tackle, I guess, the various groups that have taken root in southern Lebanon. At, at times, that has resulted in the death of Americans. And I'm thinking about the 1983 bombings that resulted in the greatest loss of Marine Corps uh, members uh, in a single day since World War II. Give us kind of an overview. Um, How, sorry, you can you can interject and I'll ask a question then you you clarify how has U.S. foreign policy strategies evolved over the last 41 years in this region uh, thank you for having me on um, well I, I would say that the intervention in the 1980s was actually meant to uh, help uh, disengage the Lebanese from themselves let's not forget that Lebanon was at the time uh, engaged in a massive bloody civil war that had been raging since 1975 uh, and our forces were there to disengage the different sides. The Israelis had themselves intervened in uh, uh, the, Isra uh, the, the Lebanese civil war at the behest of uh, warlord Bashir Jamayel, uh, getting, getting themselves entangled. Our forces also got entangled, mm -hmm. uh, leading to the death of uh, uh, U.S. personnel and U.S. servicemen. Like you mentioned, we have the Marine barracks bombing coming up. Uh, U.S. policy uh, in the region over the past 41 years has changed considerably since that time. Uh, we've gone through periods of optimism when we thought that certain Lebanese figures, uh, namely Rafiq Hariri in the, after, in the aftermath of the Civil War or the March 14th movement that arose in the wake of his assassination in 2005, could bring some change to the country. Uh, the latest manifestation of perhaps this glimmer of hope came with the uh, uh, October 2019 uh, protests uh, that erupted in Lebanon. Uh, calling for uh, systematic change or systemic change, rather, in the country. We didn't quite intervene. We took a much more cautious approach uh, at that time, I think, uh, because of the disappointment we'd experienced uh, with Lebanese figures promising us the sky and being unable to deliver, going back to Jamayel himself in the 1980s. Um, and so let's talk about where we are at right now. The U.S. has been obviously, uh, you know, an enthusiastic partner in uh, pushing for negotiations to get to some sort of a ceasefire deal here. But other than Israel and Hamas, which stakeholders outside of these two groups hold the most power when it comes to negotiations? Well, Hezbollah is a major actor. They've been a major actor in this conflict since they entered uh on October 8th, and Hezbollah is not alone in this. They're acting on behalf of uh, the broader resistance axis, this uh, regional uh, Iranian-led uh, coalition of militias and groups uh, that have a, that share an anti-American orientation, uh, an alignment with Iran's uh, overall uh, uh, politics and objectives. Uh, Hamas, as Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah has uh, said about a couple, a couple of months ago, is negotiating on their behalf. Uh, if, the, if, the, if Hamas accepts a ceasefire in Gaza that is satisfactory to, to Hamas, these other uh, entities have said they will stop attacking Israel. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily resolve the problem because all that, that halt in fighting would do uh, would create uh, a, you know, a situation where it's, it's, it's a situation of quiet that restores the status quo ante, uh, but does, does not actually solve the problem. It would create a deceptive quiet on Israel's borders. Um, I feel like we are really just scratching the surface, and this is a conversation we could have for an hour. Hopefully we'll have you back at another time. Uh, David Dawood, thank you very much.